Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Seth with Otmo. Uh, we're gonna talk about these Navimo by Segway today. And speaking of Segway, how do the goofy scooter guys go from this to this? For those of you around in the 90s, you might remember the hype train that was Segway. We thought it was a whole new form of transportation that was gonna revolutionize us. No more walking, anything like that. And then it kind of fell off. When's the last time you saw Segway? Exactly. Despite not seeing Segway in headlines or around as much anymore, they've been in the background, they've been working hard. After being purchased by Ninebot in 2015, they have made a huge transition into not only autonomy and refining their portfolio, but they've expanded it quite a bit. Not only do they have the original Segways, they've also got scooters, go-karts, four-wheelers, side-by-sides, e-bikes. So it seems really promising, right? But does it live up to the hype? Will it disappear like the original Segway? or will it have some sticking power in an increasingly saturated market? Today we're gonna find out. That brings us to the point of today's video. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Navimo by Segway. Ta-da! Most of you probably recognize him, but... Hi, I'm Jake. Jake, let's get into it. Um, so, how many product lines does Segway offer? So they have two. They have the H series and they have the I series. Today we're taking a more in-depth look at the I series. Yes, and the I series is newer uh, in comparison to the H series. H series was a little bit uh, heavier in the European market and as they were developing it and getting it ready for the US market, um, they were also working on the I series. Um, so this is, is a newer model, um, but let's just do a quick overview of the H series. So there's, uh, three different models in the H line, H series of mowers. Uh, there's a 0 0.2, 0 0.37, 0 0.75, um, and it is rear wheel drive, and it has a lower cut height than this in that it only goes up to 2.4 inches. The I series, on the other hand, comes in two sizes. I-105 at about 0.125 acres. And the I-110 at about 0.25 acres. It also comes with a slightly higher cutting height range of 2 to 3.6. One does do a little less in terms of slope, coming in at about 16 degrees. A big focus of this is the fact that it is a wireless mower, as is the H-Series. Um, it's got a great setup experience, and it's got a monocular camera for vision redundancy, which it uses, and it combines it with EFLS 2.0, which is Exact Fusion Locating System, Jake. Took me a while to get used to that one. <laughs> now, the H-Series is does come with 4G. Uh, the I-Series actually has a separate 4G module, so if you wanted to add that, you can, but also, again, goes back to keeping that price point low is making that an accessory, and it's very easy to pop it into the bottom. The 4G module we were talking about earlier, pretty easy to pop this off and swap it. Pop it in there. Moving it around, got these kind of hidden handles. I think you know having those in the front with a front charge uh, is a little awkward. Um, Definitely. Big oversized wheels, uh, manual cutting deck. It looks like it's easy to replace these casters, um, which is always nice to see when you're gonna have casters because those could get pretty banged up. We've got the monocular camera, so single point camera. The manual cutting adjustment, very easy to adjust. Stop button, um, three simple buttons, um, and a, as we mentioned earlier, the display, which is just nice to have. As well as a feature I like is the uh indication the status light as well. Um, pretty much from anywhere it, this is in your yard, you will know exactly what it's up to. At this lower price point, packed with technology and what seems to be a very capable machine, let's not take our word for it. Should we run some tests? Yeah, yeah, let's go find out what this thing can do. Today we're here with the Navimo by Segway, the I-110. We're at a local park that we've tested a few different mowers at. Um, we're gonna do just a quick map and mow, a slope test and a canopy test. So Jake, let's start with the mapping experience. It was very easy. It really didn't take much time at all either. The one thing we didn't use was the AI mapping tool since we are in an open field. Um, but that makes it even easier as you can uh, have it trace itself along boundaries where there are walkways or uh, obstacles of any sort that it can pick up on its camera. Um, you know, in terms of actual mapping, very simple, easy to drive. Really wasn't much more to it than that. Yeah, that's great, which that's exactly what you want. You want it to be easy to install, easy to adjust, easy to modify the settings. Um, overall, the app experience is great. Uh, something else we want to talk about is there is a, a signal analyzer built into the app, which is really cool. So you can get uh, basically a view of uh, how many satellites are there. It's co-viewing, which is for accuracy on the RTK, as well as how quick it is to establish that. Um, so we ran that, we got pretty positive results. You know, our reference stations out here in the open 
Um, but where we're testing is going to be obstructed from that in a few different spots. Um, so obviously best case scenario, have it out in the wide open. I do dig the app experience. I think it's pretty well thought out. Jake, we're, we're doing a very unfair test, I'd say. The Navimo is not a all-terrain slope performer. It's not all-wheel drive. It's two-wheel drive. We wouldn't ever recommend somebody running it on this slope as it will cut down on how much area it can cover. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it'll simply take too much battery to handle this. But knowing that it can handle this, that it, it is physically capable, can ease the mind of any customer who's wondering, you know, will this be able to navigate the small bumps in my yard? This isn't a terrain mower, so, you know, we, we again can't stress enough that we don't want it running on too much terrain, but you know, there, there's always some sort of unevenness to a yard and to see how well it does on a steep hill like this, uh, just builds faith in all the other areas as well. <laughs> I like that as you're saying that, talking about building faith, it's not able to mow up the hill. You know? But notice, notice what it did too. It definitely found an area that was a bit tough for it and tried to go around it. So, you know, it, it's not going to just stop and, you know, be stuck. It's clearly trying to navigate this, this tough patch. So right now we have it, you know, effectively trying to run straight up and down. So we're trying to tell it to pull its weight all the way up. After this, we'll change the mowing direction to see if, you know, will a, a more gradual cross angle um, make its life easier? And, you know, can it hold some semblance of a semi straight line at like a 45 or 90 to the main hill? It's looking less than promising for straight up and down. Oh yeah. Pull! Slowly <laughs> navigating it, but you can tell even when it is making traction, those wheels are slipping. They're not, they're not holding on. Sal, did you change it straight across or a 45? I went straight across. Okay. I think it should be able to do this because it's not gonna fight the entire hill, yeah. but I think we're gonna see an issue with the accuracy. Um, and then I think we're also gonna see, you know, I would potentially have some concerns with the center of gravity and mowing sideways. It's really the turning around that's kind of make or break for this. And it does seem to be having a little bit of trouble yeah, getting I think back it's... to its line yeah. when it does get to the end. Did it switch to the boundary? <laughs> it looks like it's trying to do a boundary cut, yeah. I mean, in good news, the good news it. is it, yeah, it's, it's climbing. Oh, come Not on, perfectly, buddy. there's some slipping and uh, that looks to be the limit, but. <laughs> So, so, you know, it's, it, it had to navigate that. It, it definitely isn't something I would recommend trying, but it did get to the top. For a unit that really isn't supposed to, that's something. We're obviously watching it, but you know, if you, if you had installed it and you're not sitting watching paint dry, you know, would you just come back to a, a mowed lawn and have no idea, you know, any of the tribulations it made it through? Yeah, and I, I suspect it would be pretty patchy. This is where most mowers are gonna struggle is incline at the boundary um, because if they get themselves in trouble, you know, and they then can't find a way out of it. I will say the battery's still at 93%. I expected it to drain a lot faster with how hard it's working. And I mean, you can tell those wheel motors are, are straining. So I, you know, I'm a little surprised there. So well, right where it started to fail is 20 degrees. Up until that point, it was about 10 to 14, which should be well in its range. So that, that's not surprising. You're not really seeing predominant lines cutting wise. We try not to cut super low since we're in a public park. I know we've mentioned it before, but yeah. you know, we don't want to scout their, their lawn and leave a, a nasty patch. A lot of these tests are more operational. We know the blades turn, if they're sharp, they'll cut. Long story short, you know, a mower not made for hills didn't do great on hills. The max slope rating on this is uh, 16 degrees, so a lot of slipping, a lot of uh, readjusting, trying to find its lines. If you left it out here all day, would it battle through it? It might, um, but you're, then you're sacrificing you know, any accuracy and again, and added wear and tear. But they warned us yeah. and we didn't listen. <laughs> Hey, that thing's mowing. It is indeed. I'll be damned. <laughs> yeah, so we, we chose this spot, hoping that the, the tree coverage and the littering of walnuts on the ground <laughs> might give it some trouble. Um, so far, I haven't even seen it suggest that it's got bad signal. I do like that there's walnuts over here. I think it's very <laughs> real to life of having yeah. debris, like sticks, everything else in the yard, not having to worry about it, getting rained on by squirrels eating. <laughs> you know, we're 
out of line of sight of the reference station. We are under multiple canopies. We're between a log cabin and a stone building. Honestly, that's why we put it here because this is a tough spot for a lot of these products to hold signal and, and work. So that's that EFLS 2.0, Exact Fusion Locating System. Yeah. Obviously the RTK reference station, but this having monocular camera on it that visually maps as a redundancy for continual use. Yeah, and the vision is a is a great redundancy to have. Um, I don't I don't think it's even come up yet, which you know is a good sign. You know we want this to rely on GPS as much as we can, uh, just for the accuracy in, in the lines and and, mm -hmm. and making sure that our coverage is complete. For for being a two wheel drive, it's 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 gotten kind of stuck a few times getting over some of these walnuts, but I'll just readjust a little bit and it's right back at it. They specifically engineered the wheels. They almost look oversized, kind of just rolling over most of, of the debris that we have here. I'm still just impressed with the trees. Yeah, you know, even, even get rid of the buildings, uh, these trees should be a problem. And yet, you know, I'm sitting there staring at that light, waiting for it to, to flash yellow, which would indicate that its signal is poor. I, I haven't seen it go off of blue uh, once. You, you, you kind of feel like you're missing something when it's, you know, exceeding expectations. So yeah, it's a good example of going over some of those walnuts and, you know, yeah. climbed right over it. When I see one of those back casters hit a walnut, those, those front wheels are, are, have enough heft to them that's rolling right over them, so that, I'm impressed. I will say I'm becoming a bigger fan of front wheel drive. I think that the drive wheels on the front are probably gonna have an easier job trying to, if you're on any kind of slope, maintain a straighter line yeah versus if they're in the rear because then it's the trying to fight the whole uh weight of the mower pushing forward so i think you know that front wheel drive design i wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more of that so let's let's have a look at the obstacle avoidance here okay what really impresses me about this mower too is that it, it gets pretty close you know mm -hmm. it's it's not allowing for much um to be left to to trim later or any unevenness if if that object, in this case, Seth, were to move. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it, just a little less patchy and uh, pretty impressive how, how it's getting close, even, even, to, the, even to the camera so equipment. <laughs> it's, it's, it's still navigating around that tripod without uh, leaving much, much left. See, there, I wonder if it, it, it seemed to try to climb that walnut and then back off. I wonder if it sensed the resistance and uh, kind of moved, worked its way around, found a different way of turning around. Yeah, uh, especially we, near the boundary. Yeah. As we've seen this go, it seems like it favors zero point turning, mm -hmm. uh, but you can also see it do, do a sort of three point turning as well. That front wheel drive design with the rear casters being close together, you can definitely see maneuvering wise, it's able to like rotate very quickly and easily in the same spot with, you know, little effort. In terms of tearing up grass, you know, it, that, that seems to be a lot of people's concerns at this point is tend to get it turning in the same spots repeatedly. Uh, this, this unit seems light and nimble enough that I wouldn't even think that that would be a, a possibility here. Bang! Now we're back in the office. We've completed our test and we did not film out of order. You know, we were very impressed at the, uh, the capabilities under tree coverage. Um, we really didn't lose signal at all. So it did a great job. A little less so on the hill. Um, that shouldn't come as a surprise since we were very much operating this well out of spec. It's still fun to do, and I think it's fair to do it to all of them just to see how they do. Yeah, so your best use is going to be smaller suburban lawns. Uh, we want them to be pretty flat. You know, this is a two-wheel drive unit. Uh, so we do want to keep that in mind. Um, this does very well in enclosed spaces, so backyards enclosed by fences. Uh, you can actually then take advantage of the AI mapping tool as well. Keeping it simple, not too complex, uh, and this thing will, uh, will do well for you. I think you're getting an incredible value with this. I've been impressed with the technology. I think the price point's great. Um, and I think that, yeah, like you said, those suburban or smaller urban lawns, you know, we try and stand behind the products we carry. We try and test them and, you know, put them through the ringer. And that way we know if we're giving something, a solution to a customer that, you know, it's going to be a solution and we know what to uh, tell them to anticipate. So I think with the Navimo, I, I've been very happy with the overall experience. I think, again, at the price point, the size. Um, it's going to be very um, specific on the customer size with the limited size, but outside of that, I don't 
expect to see too many major issues. Hey, thanks again for joining. We hope this helped you uh, understand a little bit more about this mower. Um, great little compact package full of technology for smaller lawns. Um, if you're interested in learning more, you can head to our website or you can find a CSSP near you and potentially get an on-site demo. Um, so check that out as well at opmo.com. Um, I think that'll wrap us up for today. So I appreciate the view. Um, like and subscribe, do appreciate that as well. Uh, but until next time, take care. I-105 balls. <laughs> the I. Of Navimo or say Gumpma. And it's seemingly incredible. Shit. Okay. That's my dubious look. Jake, how many lines are there? How many lines are there? There's two lines. The Navimo by Segway. Jake. Do you want to bring the Navimo by Segway over here? Bring the stage?